Well, family, you officially have 21 days of shopping left until Christmas. You don't have to worry anymore, though, because you can shop any time, day or night, and some of us can testify that in the midnight hour, we are on our tablet, on our phone, at our PC, yet with Amazon at our fingertips. According to the Washington Post, the UPS will ship somewhere around 750 million packages this holiday season, and Amazon is predicting they will hit a billion. They'll do the work, and all many of us have to do is click and wait. If you have, like I do, friends and family who like waiting for packages, there are some exciting new gift options that you might want to think about this holiday season. Uh, uh, now, this year, what is in vogue is a gift of the month club. For about $50 a month, you can sign your loved one up for the bacon of the month club. Don't judge me. Do not judge me. Everything is better with bacon, and thank God for grace. Amen. You can sign your loved one up where they can receive a one, two, or three pound selection of artisan bacon every single month. It's true. I can send you the link. No, I didn't send it to anybody, and yes, I may have sent it to myself. Don't judge me. Amen. There's nothing wrong with gifting yourself. Amen. There is, after all, a pickle of the month club and even a PB&J of the month club. And let's be real, y'all. Some of y'all have already been round the way to Cooper's Hawk. Y'all know what that is. And they have a wine of the month club. Some of y'all are card carrying members. Wave your card in the air. Wave it like you just don't care. Amen. <laughs> it's $44 a month. Amen. <laughs> Ask me how I know later. Okay. The truth of the matter is we have a lot of options relative to our shopping, but the new reality is that we spend less time shopping and now more time waiting. Can I get a witness? A number of years ago, CNN told the story about Charles McKinley. Brother Murky, your namesake, decided that he was going to take a different approach for Christmas, that he was going to take a different approach to gift giving. And now, I don't recommend this parenthetically to anybody, but Brother Charles McKinley uh, shipped himself uh, in a crate from his home in New York uh, to his parents' home in Dallas. This is a true story, y'all. Uh, amen. Somehow, uh, he actually made it home, but the final delivery man on the last leg uh, from the FedEx facility to his parents' home happened to see in the crate some eyes uh, looking back at him. Uh, now, this diligent fed ex delivery man uh, was on top of it uh, and he thought because we're doing all this education uh, about human trafficking uh, that something uh, was wrong so instead of delivering the package to the porch uh, and just leaving it there uh, he delivered the package with brother Charles McKinley in uh, who had shipped himself as a gift uh, to the parents uh, unfortunately uh, uh, the delivery man called the police uh, and more unfortunate was the fact Act, uh, that Brother McKinley had some outstanding papers on him. Y'all know those are warrants. Amen. Um, and the police came uh, to check out what they thought was a human trafficking situation. Lo and behold, they found this outstanding paper, and there was a lot of paper. So Brother McKinley, instead of shipping himself home, shipped himself right back to jail. Amen. Uh, his family was waiting on this package that they heard was going to arrive. He told them it was a big surprise. How many of you know know that the family wasn't the only one that got a surprise, but they were waiting. Christmas is certainly this season, this Advent season, certainly a time of waiting and expectation. Uh, you can feel, certainly if you hang around children, uh, you can feel their expectation grow. Uh, some of our children are on their P's and Q's. They are the nicest they are going to be all year long because the elf on the shelf is watching and because they understand that Santa is making a list and checking it twice and Santa already knows who's naughty or nice and they need to clean up from the last 11 
seven months of the year. So they are especially kind and helpful because they are expecting something when the big day arrives. As we prepare and wait, it occurs to us in this Advent season that we spend a lot of time in our lives waiting. Can anybody testify that you spend a lot of time waiting? Waiting on your job, waiting at home, waiting, Sister Gina, when it's time for new tires. Waiting, Dr. Mary Jackson, when it's service time and they tell you one time and it's really like four hours later, waiting and preparing while only a fraction of our time is filled with actual experience. Think about all the work that goes into decorating for, preparing for, cooking for, shopping for Christmas, and then it's over faster, my daddy would say, than you could say jackrabbit. We spend more time waiting than we actually do celebrating, and then we actually do doing other things and experiencing it. Consider your Thanksgiving meal that you actually enjoyed. How long did it take for somebody to prepare the meal? How long did it take, tell the truth, for you to inhale it? You spent way more time waiting. Some of us are still paying for Thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. We have on stretchy pants and shirts and shorts and uh, pants and skirts today. We often think that when we're finally doing something, we've actually just waited and prepared in a new location. The truth of the matter is that waiting is a necessary part of life, that God is calling us to a place of waiting. It's important to know in some instances, like Brother Charles McKinley, what we thought we were waiting on may not turn out to be that great of a gift. It may not be the best experience. It may be a surprise, but not the way we were expecting a surprise. It may not come at all if you've ever dealt with any delivery service. Come here, Amazon. Hey, Amen. where's my stuff? Uh, I've gotten to the point now where I don't even bother the company. I ask Alexa, where is my stuff? And I got an attitude when I ask her. Hey, Amen. I'm irritated because I get tired of waiting. But the truth is, from the very beginning, it was a part of our experience, even as Christian disciples. But this morning, as we begin the Advent cycle, we can celebrate, even as we're waiting, that it's already here. What do you mean it's already here? Simeon, who was a prophet, Simeon, a priest, Simeon, who served in the temple, Simeon, an older man married to a woman named Anne. Anna had decided, had made up his mind. Uh, Simeon had heard from the prophets of old that the Messiah was coming. Simeon had a desire uh, to see Jesus for himself. Uh, Simeon, who lived in Jerusalem, who ministered in the temple in Jerusalem, the word says he was waiting for the consolation uh, or the help of Israel. Anybody ever had to wait on a contractor? Uh, you know that DIY isn't a good idea. How many of you know that while YouTube can tell you how to do any and everything. There are some things you need to leave to the professionals. Raise your hand if you figure that out in the name of Jesus. If you're still struggling with that, we're going to pray for you. Amen. Because some of us can make something way worse than it was because we figure we can DIY. Israel couldn't save itself. Israel was waiting on help. Israel had from prophets of old, now by this time that Simeon's time, more than 2,000 years had passed since the prophets began to talk about uh, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel. Uh, more than 2,000 years of waiting uh, for the one who would save Israel. Uh, more than 2,000 years uh, for the revelation of the one who prophets said would be born in Bethlehem. Uh, 2,000 years for the one that Micah said uh, would be born of a virgin. 2,000 years uh, for the one who would come and bring redemption. Uh, 2,000 years for the one who would reconcile man back to God uh, without the blood of goats and bulls. Uh, here then the word says uh, that Simeon was righteous uh, and devout. Uh, can I tell somebody uh, that while you are waiting, uh, there's a right way to wait? Uh, somebody look at your neighbor and say, there's a right way to wait. Uh, Simeon wasn't trying to do whatever, uh, whenever, uh, however, uh, with whomever uh, he could do while he was waiting on the Lord. Uh, my Bible says 
says that Simeon had some spiritual discipline about himself. He was waiting on God. He was believing that God was going to move. He trusted that there was something that God was going to reveal. And he believed, Dr. Quentin, that he was going to see it before he left the earth realm. But Simeon didn't decide that because help was coming, uh, because his hope was in the Messiah, that because the Messiah was bringing salvation, that he could do whatever he wanted to do. No, the word says that Simeon was righteous. How many of you know that while you're waiting on God, you got to make sure that your life is clean? While you're waiting on God, you got to make sure that your heart is clean. While you're waiting on God, you got to make sure that your mind is stayed on him. Simeon was righteous. That's what was going on on the inside. Ah, but how many of you know that it's more that something on the inside ought to work its way to the outside? Anybody know that somebody ought to be able to look at my life and tell that there's something different about me? Somebody ought to be able to look at our lives and see that something is at work. There's an old gospel song that says, what is this that's got me acting kind of strange? Somebody ought to be able to see some strangeness, some peculiarity in your life and recognize that there's something different. Simeon was righteous. That's his inside stuff. But Simeon also had a reputation of being a man of God. While we are waiting, we ought to be waiting in a way that we are getting ourselves together on the inside. Amen. Anybody able to tell the truth and say, I'm not what I used to be? Is there anybody willing to just um, just to say, when I think about who I used to be, when I think about my attitude, when I think about what I used to think about, uh, when I think about the places I used to go and the things I used to do, I am grateful to God that I am not what I used to be. Uh, that's where righteousness begins to work in my life. Uh, and I begin to let go of sin. Uh, and I begin to let go of attitudes that don't reflect the glory of God. Uh, and my thinking begins to line up with the thoughts of Christ uh, and my way ways to begin to line up with his ways. That's what the righteousness is about. As I am waiting, not just that, there is something that somebody else ought to see visibly in our lives while we are waiting on our better. Amen. And I'm waiting on my better. My testimony is I am not what I used to be, but I am not what I am going to be if I just hold to God's unchanging hand. But somebody ought to see that God is working something out. Uh, this morning I stopped by uh, just to tell somebody uh, that in the midst of this Advent season, uh, while you are waiting, uh, ask yourself, what am I waiting on? Israel was waiting on the Messiah. They were waiting on the Son of God. Uh, the good news is uh, he's already here. Uh, we ought to be able to tell somebody Christ has already come. And in this Advent season, uh, what I'm waiting on is a fresh anointing. What I'm waiting on is a fresh visitation. What I'm waiting on is a new purpose in my life. What I'm waiting on is a closer walk with him. What am I waiting on in the midst of it? My Jewish brothers and sisters, some of them would say we're still waiting on Messiah. My testimony is he's already come. What have I done to get ready to have Christ Christ uh, come in my life again. Uh, three things and I'm going to be out your way. Uh, if Christ is already here, uh, if the hope of my salvation is already here, uh, if my hope for eternal life, uh, if my hope for the abundant life right here on earth is already here, uh, what am I preparing for in Advent? Uh, I'm preparing first and foremost for the Lord ah, to do more work in me. Uh, I am an unfinished work. Uh, somebody said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Now, I know some of us walk around like we have it all together. We want to judge other people when they fail or come short of the glory of God. How many of you know that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Each and every one of us, I got sin, you got sin, all God's children have sin. The truth of the matter is about sin is some of our sin is just more public than others that's all that's the only difference between us and anybody else sometimes my stuff is just more 
under cover than other people's. But our hope is already here in Christ Jesus. In this season, beloved, we prepare ourselves for growth in Christ. And one of the ways we prepare ourselves is by repenting, letting go of our sin. Amen. Repenting. That's the first thing. It's already here. Jesus has already come. Amen. We're looking for new birth. We're looking for a new and fresh experience with him. And so we prepare by repenting. Not only that, beloved, we prepare. Amen. By relating. Uh, that is all season long. Somebody ought to hear you say something about Jesus. Amen. If you can't say nothing else but Jesus is the reason for the season, somebody ought to hear us relating our lives to his having come. Amen. Amen. Uh, it shouldn't be a big secret that I'm a Christian or you're a Christian. Uh, we shouldn't only be Christian disciples here at 223 Elizabeth Avenue or on Sunday in the virtual experience. Uh, all day, every day, somebody ought to know that our testimony is not about Santa Claus. Uh, amen. Uh, our testimony is not about the elf on the shelf. Uh, our testimony, as much as I love it, is my favorite song for Christmas that is not Christian. Amen. I love Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but how many of you know that Rudolph uh, with that red knows the red of his nose does not signify the blood of Jesus. Don't try to preach that and don't let anybody tell you that. Don't let anybody tell you uh, that the angels are like the elf on the shelf. Don't you dare let anybody tell you that your blessings come from a fat most of the time depicted as a white guy. Uh, but after church, if you haven't been into the fellowship hall, you can see that Santa Claus looks like a lot of us. Amen. Uh, but don't let anybody tell you that some benevolent man uh, squoze himself down your chimney. Uh, some of us grew up in houses that didn't even have chimneys. Uh, how dare we uh, give somebody else the glory uh, for what God has done in our lives? Uh, can I tell somebody uh, your blessing is already here. Uh, what God has for you, it is for you. Uh, in this waiting season, uh, the question isn't what God is going to do or what God wants to do. Uh, the waiting season is how you wait. Uh, can you wait with righteousness? Uh, can you wait and keep your spiritual discipline? Uh, can you wait by telling anybody who will listen uh, about Jesus? Uh, I I'm expecting a man Christ to return. Uh, he's been here before. Uh, amen. He's already here right now. He's in my heart. Uh, somebody said, Pastor, hey, what are you waiting for? Uh, let me tell you what I'm not expecting uh, in the Advent season uh, as I take my seat uh, uh, this Advent season uh, because Christ is already here. Uh, and he is my hope and uh, my joy. Uh, I am not expecting and I'm not preparing to be stressed out. Uh, I'm not expecting to be overwhelmed. Uh, I'm not expecting things to fall apart. Uh, I'm not expecting to be defeated uh, because victory is already here. Uh, I, I'm not expecting uh, to be left by myself because he's already promised uh, that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, I'm not expecting to be in the dark about who he is uh, because he already has revealed himself. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not expecting uh, to be caught off guard by the attack of the enemy uh, because he's already told me uh, that if the world hates him, uh, that they're also going to hate me. Uh, I'm not expecting uh, to miss the joy of the season uh, uh, because he's already uh, placed joy bells in my heart. Uh, I have decided uh, that the season is here uh, for me to speak over my own life. Life, uh, that God's blessings are already here. Uh, it doesn't matter what you get under the tree this year. Uh, you ought to open your mouth uh, and say, I've already got the best gift. Uh, it's already come. Uh, I already have it in hand. Uh, it's already in my heart. Uh, I'm already walking in his favor. Uh, I already have healing. Uh, I already have deliverance. Uh, I already have uh, the wealth of the world uh, because the earth is the Lord's uh, and everything in it. Therefore, in this season, I'm only waiting for his kingdom to come. In this season, I'm only waiting for the lost to be found. In this season, I'm only waiting for the blind to see. In this season, I'm only waiting for the unloved to know love. In this season, I'm only waiting for the hurt to be healed. In this season, I'm only 
waiting for those that look dead, that which looks like is done, to be exalted and raised up again. I'm only waiting for Jesus to come, not as an itty bitty baby, not wrapped in swaddling clothes, not lying in a manger, but I'm only waiting for him to come on a white horse. I'm waiting for him to come, ah, not babbling baby words, but with the sword of the spirit coming out of his mouth. I'm only waiting for him to say, for those of us who are dead in Christ, come on up a little higher. For those of us who remain, come on up with me. I'm only waiting for him to say, well done, good and blessed servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Heaven is already yours. My blessing, your blessing, doesn't need to be wrapped in a box, doesn't need any ribbons, won't cost you a thing on your credit card. Your blessing is already here. You ought to shout glory. Christ is already here. We're waiting on a fresh experience with him.